I'm so happy to be with Lucas and Arthur Yusin today. Welcome. Now, they're both on a boat in Amsterdam because <laughs> Lucas was telling me that, that there's a heat wave in Amsterdam. Now, how, so what does that mean? How hot is it? Okay, no, in Celsius, we're, we're around 33 right now, which is oh for, God. For, Dutch, for Dutch standards, <laughs> it's rather hot. And um, we don't have any air conditioning or whatsoever at home because we usually don't get temperatures like this. No. But we're happy to, to have a, a small boat and we can get out. And uh, here, it, here it's completely fine. My God, that's hot anywhere, I think, 33. How long has the heat wave been going on? Well, I think it just um, started, but I heard it it's going to last for eight days. Wow. That it's going to be above 30 degrees. So we still have some, some hot times ahead of, ahead of us. Oh, it must make it very difficult to work. Why are you not that's, working at the moment? Well, well that's, the, that's the thing. We're not really working at the moment because of the, due to the corona crisis. But although I have to say that things are... Um, starting up again a little bit here in Europe. So uh, uh, we're not again fully at work like we used to, but we, there are some small things uh, coming up. So, I mean, have you, obviously you've spent a lot more time at home now. Uh, yes. Has that, has that made it, I mean, do you have two pianos at home for practicing and uh, how do you split the practicing? Yeah, we have. Um, well, we are lucky to have to both have a piano at home. We live in yeah. separate apartments. Oh, so, okay, of um, course. Yeah. So we we can always practice whenever we want separately, and we also still have two pianos at home at our parents' place. So right. if we want to practice uh, pieces for two pianos, we always go to our parents' place, and then we can see our parents, which is also always very nice. So um, yeah, we are very thankful to have to have quite a lot of pianos uh, everywhere. So the practicing, there is no excuse to to not do the practicing. Now, do you two live in Helvesum as well? No, or we live, live in Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Ah, and how our far parents is... still live in Helvesum. And how far is Helvesum from Amsterdam? Just in half an hour by car. So it's it's really close actually. And it's an easy drive. Yeah, it's, it's, it's 20 minutes of highway and then 10 minutes uh, through little small ways and then you're there. So it's, it's no distance at all. And your father is still in the orchestra in Helfenson? Well, officially, by the contract, he still is. But I think he hasn't seen the orchestra for, I think, five, six, no, five months or something like that. And, uh, right. The problem, of course, is that they, they are starting now with the smaller ensemble, so the smaller pieces, not for big orchestra. And he's a timpani player. Yeah, of course. So most of the time, um, the timpani is, is, is left away. So I think he, he, he it, it will take some time before they are going to do the big pieces again, like the big symphonies with big orchestra. But let's see. Hopefully... They find a way to, to, to do it. and um, But but he, he has been home for a while, yeah. How, I mean, how is his state of mind? Are people, how are people in Holland? How are they feeling? I think in, in general, um, the problem is that right now they are a little bit too optimistic, maybe. Um, uh, we, had a, we had a couple of months in, in which everything everything was closed and everything was very negative. And of course it was terrible for the restaurants, for musicians, for people yeah. in general. But um, uh, due to these couple of months, the, the virus was completely under control. Everything went very well. And now things have started up again a little bit. We are able to give small concerts. The restaurants are open again due to the beautiful weather. There's a lot of people out on the streets. Yeah. Um, but you can also see now that the... the um, the, the number of cases it's going the, up. actually actually in the last week coincidentally have gone up um, quite dramatically again um, mm -hmm. which which is it's we're not in a, in a bad spot we can, we can we can still fix it but you you do see that once the people um, uh, get optimistic again which is very nice and they start to forget a little bit about what's happening uh, the number of cases go up again also and then the government is going to shut things down again and so it's a, we're a little bit in a situation where we don't really know where things are going. But for us personally, 
we are very happy that we uh, get to play again sometimes it's, it's that's it's been, wonderful um, we we always say that it's wonderful to have a holiday but you have to be able to um uh decide yourself when the holiday ends exactly. and for us that was not the case so far exactly when i was looking at your bios again uh so you both at some point studied with marie jean Piresh, right yes what i'm curious about is that i see that lucas also and i don't know whether it's actually studied with or had master classes but you've studied with Menachem Presler and also Bashkirov and yes. and i can't imagine two more different teachers or people or approaches to, how how do you how does it affect you when you go from one teacher to another because they must all have their own ideas about things yes uh you're absolutely right good question them, they, good question yeah. so some of them they are complete uh completely different from each other and uh, for me actually i was always um i always liked that a lot uh, i yeah. think that the the, the base of our playing or at least i hope that the base yeah. of our playing both from me and arthur is what we learned from maria joao pires because it was a we were with her in an age from 13 until 18 years old somewhere yes. in that age right. where you get influenced a lot uh, by by your teacher after that i went to to press her uh, who is a fantastic teacher fantastic pianist and uh, I think that what he demanded was a really rational explanation also to how you play when I when I would play something um a certain way I was always used to play it like that because I felt playing like that and he would always ask no but why are you playing it like that I want you to explain to me why you're playing it like that where does the phrase go to how does the uh, harmony uh, evolve where, where, and and that's something that i had never done before that so i would learn a lot about a beethoven sonata not only about how to play it beautifully but also um um presser could really well explain why beethoven wrote what he wrote and then translate that into how you should play it and i think that for for a certain period of time that was very nice and after that i went to bashkirov who is is completely different he's he's russian he's full of emotion um and his way of teaching it i think it's not for everybody because it can be rather tough but for me i was there for about two years and i i um, i'm happy that i that that i did it that i um uh, that i experienced it and after those two years i was also very honest and i said okay that's enough for me um now i know what 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 this is like and i tried to take as much positive things that i could um but but i like those contrasts and baskirov always talked about a big sound we we came from uh, marie joao as a very intimate way of playing and and yes. that's a way of yeah. playing that we adore that we adore a lot and yes. i hope that that's a big part of our playing but maybe sometimes i would play too intimate and too small and he he would really mm -hmm. demand that big sound that goes until the last seats of the of the house and i i fully understand that you don't need that sound always but i'm happy that in those two years um he he brought that to my attention so i i never regretted studying with with different teachers i i tried to take the best from all of them and combine that into um yeah something good and what what led you to presler why did you go to presler yeah of, we knew of course i knew presler from the bozart trio they they made yeah. so many fantastic recordings um uh marie joao knew knew him personally also and suggested him and ah. um i think it was also i i was very eager to study with him because if i would not have studied with him now i don't know if i would have gotten the chance later again he's a he's um uh, well it's kind of harshly to say but he he is a dying kind he's one of the last of course of his generation and the last that makes music in his way and um i i that that was that was a huge trigger for me to um to go and, and practice with him just to to experience one more time how it is to be with someone his age and his style and um yeah 
And of course, the, the, the piano world has just lost another icon, and that's Beyond Fleischer. Yes, um, yes, which is... Uh, you know, is, another connection yeah. to the past that's gone. Exactly, and ju just like Press or those two, they are both fantastic musicians, but also fantastic teachers. And the combination of both, that is not something that you see a whole lot. Usually they're either fantastic musicians and then they also do the teaching, or they're fantastic teachers and they, they have played a little bit themselves as well. But to be so good and so famous in both professions, uh, Fleischer yes. and Pressler were two of the, the last ones that really did that, I think. Yes. I, uh, you know, one of my, what they call desert island recordings, the kind of the music I will turn to if I'm desperate or depressed or whatever, yeah. is the, sh so it's the Schubert fantasy, which you, you played here. Yes, yes. And the recording on YouTube that I go to is Maria Jean Piresh. I think yes. it's with Julian Lemieux. Yes, that's very well possible. And, you know, I suppose you can say this about all Schubert. Um, I think it's probably among the most difficult music to play. Uh, do you find, because but that fantasy, you have to pick the right, first, you have to pick the right tempo. If the tempo is off, the piece can be a disaster. Am I crazy? You know, I think it's definitely true what you say. I think it's one of the great, if not the greatest masterpiece for, for Piano for Hands that's ever written. And um, I mean, he was, he wrote it in his last year. He was, he was a dying man. And um, yeah. you can hear that in, in his music, I think. And there's so much emotion, so much so much beyond the rules of what of what a normal piece should sound like uh, and um uh it, it, you know it weighs so heavy this 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 emotion what is in the music and you 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 have to be i think very mature to play it and to to pick the right tempi to pick the right dynamics and um we we have been playing it for all our lives and of course we were too young when we were when we were 10 and 13 i mean technically Everybody can play it. But yes, of course. To feel the right emotion, it's very, yeah. very difficult. And um, I can imagine that this recording, I don't know it so well, but that this recording has it all. Uh, the one by Marie-Joie Pires and uh, Julia Lieber. The other, by the way, the other Schubert piece that sends me into orbit is the, fa the fantasy for violin and piano. Yeah. Um, I think that's an incredible piece as well. And I, uh, I did say I wanted that at my funeral, but one of my co-workers told me it was too long and people wouldn't stick around that long. <laughs> I'd have I'm to sure find they something. will. I'm sure they will. <laughs> I have to find something shorter. And I, I, that, that piece actually, you know, and I don't know if, this is, if you get affected like this, Schubert, to me, even though he's in major keys at times, and let's not talk about his dances, and, you know, the landler and things like that, but no. in, in his sonatas and in these fantasies, um, I find the music incredibly sad and moving. And I remember once talking to uh, Radu Lupu about the piano and violin fantasy because we had a recording of it he'd made with um, Simon Goldberg. And I said, I thought it was one of the saddest pieces of music I'd ever heard. And he looked at me like I was crazy. And he said, it's not sad at all. And it's in a major key. And I said, but so <laughs> what, you know? Well, I think, I, think, I think everybody has their own words for it, what it is, this atmosphere. But I think there's all, always a Melan melancholic atmosphere is that a yeah. is, is that the right word Manusha? melancholic atmosphere in his music and um i mean he had a tough life he had a tough life he wasn't a happy rich wealthy man no there was a lot of negative things happening in his life and um i don't know if it's sad because i also always hear hope in his music yes. hope yeah and beauty yeah. so in the way that is not sad to me but um I think for me, it's the he. You can hear he is so vulnerable, 
and that is so beautiful. That's the, maybe that's the right word. That's yeah, the word. And so, and I, I also hear that sometimes in, in Schumann's music, you know, there's no, yeah. there's no ego. It comes right from the heart. And um, it's very vulnerable always. And I think that's so beautiful about the music from, from Schubert. And uh, also you... You can think of the Austrian mountains a lot of times when you when you hear his mu music and the the peaceful the peaceful environment. But in the meantime, it's so vulnerable and so many things are happening. So, but everybody has different words for it. So maybe it's sad for you. Maybe it's vulnerable for me. If maybe it's happy to somebody else. That's also the yeah. the, the beautiful thing about talking about music. I think. So have <laughs> you? Um... Have you had it? Have you been commissioning any more pieces, or um, have um, you expanded we, your repertoire while the, you haven't been playing concerts, or what? Yes, we we actually have. Um, um, immediately when we when we when we heard that concerts were really not a possibility anymore, we started to look what we could do of course first we took a little bit of vacation and uh, yeah um, we had a really nice time but very quickly we thought there has to be something which we can do and the only thing that was possible actually was to make recordings um, oh yeah so we did uh, two recordings in in these last couple of months one of which is a um, a full Dutch recording with only Dutch composers um, it's more or less modern music. Uh, and this recording is almost completely finished, except for a live recording of a newly composed piano concerto, which we will record next year. And because that's a live recording, we couldn't do that part right now. But once we've done that, that CD is completely finished. And we've recorded a whole new uh, Russian album with uh, works from Rachmaninoff, uh, Shostakovich, um, mm -hmm. who wrote a wonderful concertino for two pianos, which we didn't know, actually. And uh, because of the coronavirus, we just it crossed our paths and we, we loved the piece. So we practiced it and we recorded it immediately. And um, for the next season, we also try to cooperate it as much as we can in the, um, into our programs. Um, and a lot of the Dutch pieces also we didn't know yet and were new to us. So we, we have expanded our repertoire. But your question was if we commissioned any new pieces. And I don't think we have done that in the last couple of uh, uh, weeks, I'm very. Months, but... I'm so excited to hear about Shostakovich because I adore Shostakovich. She's one of my favorite composers. And uh, really, so uh... you've got to keep it in your repertoire because I, I did promise you when you come back you'll have two pianos, didn't I? Next time we'll come to Canada, we'll, we'll play the Shostakovich for sure. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean, I, you know, we, who knows when things are going to start up again. I hope it won't be too long. I give, know give, us a, give us a couple of practice rounds in Europe. And then once we can play it really well, we, we come to you guys <laughs> in Canada. And then we do it for real. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, oh, it's so wonderful. You were just. It was so fantastic having you here, and you gave the best kids, uh, not kids, but concert for young people that we've wow. had in, ever had. It was fantastic how you communicated with those young people and even invited them to come up and play. It was so special. And your time was, here was so short. Yeah, well, we have to say we, I mean, we've done a really uh, quite a few concerts last year, but to be in Van to be in, uh, in in Canada and there with you, it was we enjoyed it so yeah, much. And it it was wasn't too short, but it was really one of the well most memorable concerts and stays in uh, abroad. Oh, that's so we, uh, yeah, and I oh, don't say that to, to, to be polite. It, it, I really, <laughs> really, really mean that. Yeah. Oh, that's so wonderful of you. Well, listen. Um, yeah. So you you've got some concerts coming up in Germany. Yes. Yeah. Uh, starting from um, September, Arthur. Well, well, the first one is in Italy right now, actually, but we're, oh. we're starting in September again. And do you have any idea? I mean, I'm talking now from, let's say, from my perspective here. We lost half of our season last season. We're about to lose the next half of our season coming up. And yeah. I'm, I'm struggling to, to put the artists who I've lost 
back in as I go forward. Are you finding that as far as your bookings go ahead, are people trying to re-invite you now from the times you were cancelled or have they just missed out and your careers are already going that part? No, 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 no. I think that we try as much as we can. And we've also said that to our management, we try as much as we can to make up all the missed concerts. And uh, yeah. we're, we're young guys, relatively young and healthy, luckily. So uh, we have a lot of energy and we had enough holidays for the co next coming 10 years. So uh, <laughs> we try as much as we do as we can to do everything. Of course, there are some projects that were so big and it demands so much planning with orchestras um, yeah we yeah. we were supposed to do a big beethoven cycle uh, with the five piano concertos and the uh, mozarteum salzburg in rotterdam and it, you know Camarata that involves salzburg. flying trend uh, sorry Camerata salzburg that then involves flying traveling rehearsals uh, those things you you cannot make them up and they just they just disappear which which is a pity but all the the rather smaller recitals and, and everything that we can do, we, we, we make them up. So tell me, when you do the beta, what, the project that was going to be the Beethoven concertos, mm -hmm. how did you divide them up? Who well, plays so I play, one? I play two, four, and the and the choral fantasy. I don't know if you know this piece. Yes, of it's course. It's a piece for. Yeah, yeah. So I play two, four, and the the core fancy, and Lucas plays one, three, and five. So like oh, we both have three concertos that we can play. And uh, I mean, we are lucky because in December, in December, we also have this Beethoven project planned, but with another orchestra in the Netherlands. So, so we are happy that we can still do it. I mean, not in the way that we would do it in Rotterdam, but we will do it in Amsterdam. So uh, we're excited that we can still play these wonderful pieces. So we were going to bring the Jerusalem Quartet to play all the quartets of Beethoven in October. Oh, wow. But wow. we've cancelled. Uh, so I next, if they come next summer, it'll be the Beethoven 250 and a half celebration. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'm know, sure then, Beethoven himself would still approve. <laughs> I, think he, I think he would approve for sure. Yeah. yeah. Nobody yeah. ever gets tired of Beethoven, but, you know. That's true. Uh, yeah. So are you going to, when you finish talking to me, are you going to jump into the water? <laughs> I am. I don't know what Arthur is going to do, but I am, for sure. It, it's, is, that Arthur, water, it's is that water very cold? It it's is. Refreshing, well, yeah. cold, cold is a relative concept, of course. But, <laughs> I mean... It's 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 very well doable. Let's put it that yeah. way. Uh, I feel so cool seeing that water there. It's wonderful. It's so beautiful here. So we thought of, otherwise we would have called from our office at home. But it was such a beautiful day that we thought we should make use of it. So uh, yeah, like this we go from the from outside. Oh, absolutely! I'm so thrilled to have that uh, in the background. And one day I'll make it to Amsterdam. We have to say it's wonderful to see you two again. We had such a nice time in Vancouver. And uh, uh, it's a pity how things are going right now in the world, but we're sure we, we'll see each other again, for sure. Okay, fantastic. And enjoy your swim. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, Very big you hug from uh, the both of us. Thank you. Thank you. And from Vancouver, <laughs> too. Take care. Bye-bye.